two years old or something. Ready to start? So Tim was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, like within 30 seconds, she had climbed up. Good morning. Welcome to South Bay Presbyterian Church. I am Elder Kelly Chan. It's my privilege to wish you all a happy Valentine's Day and day three of the Year of the Ox. Uh, I have a few announcements today. As you can see, there are only three I like to point out, the three differences between uh, this week and last week. First is on uh, Wednesday. There's a prayer time in the afternoon at 1.30. Please, uh, uh, Stand by for more details as, as to the prayer hour on uh, Ash Wednesday. On Friday, there is a Zoom uh, meeting. Uh, if you're curious about how Zoom works and would like to know more about Zoom, please tune in. And next Sunday uh, at 1.30 is our congregational, annual congregational meeting. All are invited to attend. Uh, today also is the third day of the Year of the Ox um, is in the lunar calendar. And just to remind you that uh, God gave us the lunar calendar because that was the first uh, way that man could tell basically the time of, uh, time of the years. And in the Old Testament, starting in uh, Exodus, uh, we also see that the Israelis, the, the uh, word of God also uses the uh, lunar calendar to record the events of the early Israeli and uh, and that's why the Israeli uh, is always, uh, calendar is always uh, is like ours. Uh, it's different from every year from the Gregorian calendar. So uh, just an uh, interesting uh, thought of curiosity that came to my mind. 
Uh, today's call to worship comes from Psalms 34. I will exalt the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. My soul will boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Let's pray. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we just give thanks for the opportunity to come together to worship you, to sing praises to you. May this time be, be glorifying in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, South Bay Presbyterian Church. Good to see you all. Long time no see. It's like I wasn't here last week on stage preaching, but here I am leading worship now. I'm really thankful for this opportunity and thank you for tuning in. Uh, happy Valentine's Day slash happy Single Awareness Day. Singles Awareness Day. <laughs> it's all the singles out there. It's okay. I understand. Um, but know that singleness is a gift from God as well. But also for all of you that are in relationships that have spouses, uh, you are blessed as well with your relationships. Um, as I think about Valentine's Day, the thing that comes to mind is love and giving. Everyone's giving each other these gifts, whether it be chocolates, candies, um, flowers, whatever it may be. And although those things are great, at the same time, they're all temporal. But we believe in a God who is eternal, who gives us gifts from heaven that can't be compared to anything that we're given here on this earth. And his mercy allows us to be merciful as well and to be uh, freely give to those around us. So let's worship this merciful God that we all believe in and pour out our love and thank him for all the blessings he's poured out on us. Amen? All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this beautiful morning, Lord, that we could gather together in your presence, worshiping your name, Lord, worshiping you for all the great things you have done in and through our lives. Help us to remember that even though it is Valentine's Day, Lord, help us to remember that our love should be fully secured in you first and foremost. For your greatest commands, Lord, are to love you and to love others. So help us, Lord, to live in your love and to continually just share the gospel and bring people to a relationship with you. In Jesus' name we pray all these things. Amen. <clears throat>
So our next song, I haven't done this one in a while, but it's called Mercy, and it's one of my favorites that I was introduced to about a couple of years ago. And one verse that I always repeat to myself is, the Lord gives us new mercies every morning, and in the Beatitudes, Jesus says that, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. So this song just reminds me that God calls us to be merciful towards others, for he is a God of mercy. So feel free to listen to the song, and I hope you enjoy it.
Today's scripture reading is from the book of Acts, uh, chapter 14, verses 1 through 7. At Iconium, Paul and Barnabas went, as usual, into the Jewish synagogue. They spoke so effectively that a great number of Jews and Gentiles believed. But the Jews who refused to believe stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against their brothers. So Paul and Barnabas spent considerable time there speaking boldly for the Lord who confirmed the message of his grace by enabling them to do miraculous signs and wonders. The people of the city were divided. Some sided with the Jews, other with the apostles. There was a plot afoot, uh, afoot among the Gentiles, excuse me, uh, Gentiles and Jews, together with their leaders to mistreat them and stone them. But when they found out about it, they fled to the Lyconian cities of Lystra and Derbe and to the surrounding uh, country, where they continue to preach the good news. May God add his blessings to the reading of his word. Let us pray. Lord, we come to this time, this Valentine's Day, where we remember your love for us, your great and deep and profound love, your unconditional love, where you gave yourself fully for us. And so we come to this time as we've been singing praise, lifting up our voice, opening our hearts to you, Lord. And now we seek to open our minds and give our wills over to you that we might be the people you call us to be. You create us to be, Lord. That those of us who know you, Jesus, would hear and follow and those who maybe don't know you would be seeking and trying to understand more about what my life is to be about. So bless us in this time, Lord, we pray in the name of Christ. Amen. What is the greatest gift that you've ever given? Whether it is money or time or possessions, we are called to give generously by God. This morning, as we continue in our series, Heroes of the Faith, we are going to be looking at various scriptures in the book of Acts as we talk about Barnabas as our hero of faith. Now, Barnabas might not be as well known as other people in the Bible, but Barnabas was one who gave this wonderful gift. He was a great giver. We read in Acts 4, 36 to 37, Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. Could you imagine selling a field or a property or your house and, and giving it to the church? When I was at my church in Long Beach, we had a lady from our church who, when she died, she willed the sale of her house to our church. Quite a generous gift. But it's another thing to give a generous gift like that when you are alive. Now, I know that many people in our church regularly give generous gifts to our church. And so today I want us to think about Barnabas. And as we think about Barnabas, I want us to, to think about why would Barnabas do this? What was his motivation? And how does this make him a hero of the faith? And hopefully, as we look at Barnabas being this generous giver, giver of his money and time and encouragement and support and teaching, as he gives these things generously, I hope that it encourages us to be that kind of Christ follower who wants to give of themselves generously. I want you to think with me for a moment about the day of Pentecost, where the Holy Spirit came upon God's people in a unique and profound way. And after that time, something happened to the followers of Jesus. They began to live out his love. I mean, they began to really live it out. There was a change in their thinking and their behavior. And we read about this in Acts 4, 32 to 35. It said, all the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they shared everything they had with great power. The apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and much grace was upon them all. 
there were no needy persons among them. From time to time, those who owned lands or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales, and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone as they had need. So here we have this situation where they are one in heart and mind because the Holy Spirit is filling them and leading them and guiding them. This oneness is carrying out by the, the selling of their properties, by the giving of their resources. And because of this, we're told that there were no needy persons among them. This generosity set them apart from all others. God calls us to be generous in this way, to generously give of ourselves out of the love that, that we have from God to others. And we set ourselves apart as Christ followers when we become these kinds of generous givers. We need to open our heart. We need to let the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, move in us and guide us in this way. See, this, this is a remarkable concept. Much of the problems that we have in our world comes from the greed that we let control us. It all starts with ownership and continues with the desire to have what we have. And, and the concern that if we give too much away, that we will not have enough for ourselves. And because of this, we let our money and our possessions control us instead of us controlling them. But Barnabas was one who gave over his, his desire to control things. He gave that over to God. And because of this, he was freed up to be this generous giver. There's a wonderful movie that I highly re recommend you watch if you have not seen it before. And it's called The Ultimate Gift. This movie is about a, a young man named Jason Stevens, whose billionaire grandfather passes away, and he comes to the reading of the will, expecting that he's going to receive this large inheritance. But he finds out, out that it's put off until he completes these tasks that he is given to do. And they are designed to make him a better person. And along the way, he meets this young lady named Emily, who is dying of cancer. And by doing these tasks and have, having this relationship with Emily, he learns 12 important gifts. Let me read them for you. The gift of work, the gift of money, the gift of friends, the gift of learning, the gift of problems, the gift of family, the gift of laughter, the gift of dreams, the gift of giving, the gift of gratitude, the gift of a day, and the ultimate gift, the gift of love. These are wonderful gifts that we all need to learn. There is so much that God has for us to learn in life, but the ultimate gift to learn is that of love. And the gift of love is best given when we give of ourselves. Barnabas is a hero of the faith because he understood that as a follower of Christ, he needed to give generously. He needed to give of himself. Why did he do this? Why did he think this? Because he understood God to be this great giver, this giver who gave his only son to die for our sins so that we might have forgiveness and salvation. Minister Alistair Begg, in one of his Devotion says, Arise, go to the river of your experience, and pull up a few bulrushes, and fashion them into an ark, in which your infant faith, faith may float on the stream. Forget not what your God has done for you. Turn over the book of your remembrance, and consider the days of old. And so our first point is that when we remember what God has given to us, then we want to give generously to others. But Barnabas was more than a giver. He was a leader as well. And he gave of himself in his leadership. And his leadership was unique because he led through support and encouragement and, and uplifting and empowering of others. Acts 9, 26 to 28, we read, when Saul came to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were afraid of him, not believing that he really was a disciple. 
But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. He told them how Saul on his journey had seen the Lord and the Lord had spoken to him and how in Damascus he had preached fearlessly in the name of Jesus. So Saul stayed with them and moved about freely in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. Now it's understandable that these Christ followers, these disciples were afraid of Saul because he had been persecuting and killing Christians. He was a Pharisee with great power and he was coming to Damascus to do the same. Minister John Piper says, is there anyone who will take a risk for Saul? Is there anyone who can see in him the making of a great leader? One man came forward. One man stuck his neck out when everyone else was afraid to give Saul a chance to prove himself. And that one man was Barnabas. Barnabas, whose nickname is Son of Encouragement, helped the disciples to believe that Saul, who changed his name to Paul once he became a Christ follower, that Paul was really a follower of Christ. He really was a disciple of Christ. He really was going around preaching Christ to people. He was no longer a person that they needed to be afraid of. And I'm sure that as Barnabas did this, helping the disciples to see that Paul had been changed, that was of great encouragement and support to Paul. And it led him to be able to boldly and freely speak this message of Jesus, to really believe in himself as a disciple, as a follower of Christ. And what a great example Paul gives in his desire to preach the gospel to others. And so we see that Barnabas, through his leadership and his encouragement, is just giving generously of himself. I mean, he really put himself out there for Paul. This is great leadership because Barnabas saw a need and he stepped forth and he helped to help the disciples see that Paul really was called by the Lord and that the Lord really could call people from outside of themselves, outside of this small circle that they had formed, this leadership circle. And we see that Paul was so generous in giving his support and his encouragement to others. But another profound example of Barnabas's leadership is how when he and Paul had a disagreement, after a while when they were both in ministry and they were ministering together, but there came a time when they had this disagreement. They, they had this conflict. Here we have two significant leaders of the church being in conflict with each other, which could have caused great problems for the future of the church. Hear about it in Acts 15, 36 to 40. Sometime later, Paul said to Barnabas, let us go back and visit the brothers in all the towns where we preach the word of the Lord and see how they were doing. Barnabas wanted to take John, also called, called Mark, with them. But Paul did not think it wise to take him because he had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in the work. They had such a sharp disagreement that they parted company. Barnabas took Mark and sailed for Cyprus, but Paul chose Silas and left, commended by the brothers to the grace of the Lord. Did you notice the phrase that was used? They were in sharp disagreement with each other. Paul wanted nothing to do with John Mark because he had deserted them in the ministry in Paphilia, and he did not trust him, and he was having trouble forgiving John Mark. But Paul, uh, but Barnabas believed in John Mark still. And so he gave him his support. He gave him his encouragement. And we see that this really helped John Mark to become a faithful and fruitful disciple of the Lord. And we see later that Paul realizes his mistake and he offers forgiveness to John Mark and they, they join in ministry. And then we read these words from Paul in 2 Timothy 4.11. Paul says, only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him to me because he is helpful to me in my ministry. And we see a reconciling between Paul and John Mark and we see a reconciling between Barnabas and Paul all because of Barnabas' support and encouragement. 
in the midst of the conflict, we see that Barnabas shows great leadership by his willing to, willingness to stand up for what is right and giving John Mark another chance. You know, we need to do that to one another. We need to give each other second chances. And when we give each other second chances, we see how people are lifted up and how they become fruitful disciples and followers of Christ. And so our second point is that when we give support to others, we empower them to do great works for God. But thirdly, we see that Barnabas was a hero of the faith because he was a prophet. Now, what is a prophet? Well, in the Old Testament, another term for a prophet is seer. These prophets would receive these messages from God, and they would speak these messages to God's people. But it wasn't just about speaking a future message. It was about speaking the very truth of God and speaking that truth in a way that it convicted God's people and led them to change and, and caused them to, to live more faithfully for God. Some of the well-known Old Testament prophets you've heard about are Ezekiel and Daniel and Jeremiah and Isaiah. And these prophets would receive these words from God, and then they would impart this truth to God's people. In the New Testament, we see the prophets were fewer because much of what the people needed to, to hear and learn came through the very presence of God in the flesh, in Jesus Christ, as he came and proclaimed the word of God to the people. But there were prophets in the New Testament. We read in Acts 13.1, in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Menean, who was brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. We see that Barnabas is a prophet of God. Now, as I'm talking about this whole concept of being a prophet, you might want to just check out for a while, thinking, that's not for me. I, I don't relate to that. I, I don't think of myself as a prophet. I could never be a prophet. But that's not true. We all, in a sense, are prophets of God when we speak the very truth of God to those who do not know God's truth. As we're talking about giving and giving generously, there is no better way to give than to give someone the very truth of God. And how needed that truth is, especially in this time now, where we look at our, 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 our world, as we look at our, our society, and we see that they are fighting with each other. And there's so many people who are angry, and there's so many are lost because they do not know or follow the truth of God, a truth that is so important a truth that leads us down the right path, a truth that gives us perspective, especially in the difficult times of life like we're going through now. Jeremiah 9, 6 says, You live in the midst of deception. In their deceit they refuse to acknowledge me, declares the Lord. Now these words were spoken by the prophet Jeremiah in 600 BC, and we see even back then that there was deception that led God's people astray. Jeremiah proclaimed the truth of God then, and we are called to proclaim the truth of God now. And the New Testament is a little bit different because prophets were wandering preachers who had given their lives over to listening to the Lord and, and taking that word that they received from the Lord and, and taking it out to the people wherever the Lord led them. And it's quite evident that Barnabas was called to be a prophet in this way, to travel and proclaim the word of God to the people that he encountered. We see in Acts 14.1, at Iconium, Paul and Barnabas went as usual into the synagogue. There they spoke so effectively that a great number of Jews and Gentiles believe. Here we see that Barnabas was generous in his giving by giving the very truth, the very word of God to people, knowing that this was at the core of what they needed in their lives. And yet a prophet's job was not easy. It was not always well received because when you were 
leading people to Christ, it meant that you were taking them away from another teaching. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that was not always well received by the people. In fact, as we heard the scripture reading, we see that ultimately the people were so angry with Barnabas and Paul by leading people to Christ that they wanted to kill them. But by God's grace, they found out about this plot and they were able to escape unharmed. As a prophet, we see Barnabas committed to speaking the truth of God to all who would listen. This example should lead us to do the same. We need to think about that, how we have this gift. We have the very word of God, the very truth of God, and we need to go out and we need to, to share it with anyone who will listen because it is this word that changes people's lives. It is this word that keeps us strong in the Lord. It is this word that lifts us up in difficult times. It is this truth that keeps us founded in a place that we can stay strong, whether things are good or bad, difficult or easy, whether we understand what's going on or don't understand what's going on, whether we feel lost or we feel safe and found in Jesus Christ, whatever is going on around us, wherever we find ourselves, it is the truth of God that keeps us solid and moving forward in the right path. And so we need to go out and speak this truth and know that when we do, we are planting seeds that God can bring to fruition. And so our third point is that we need to give the truth of God to all those who do not know this truth. You probably know that Charles Schultz was the creator of the comic strip Peanuts. And Charles Schultz had an interesting philosophy, I think a very good philosophy, as he talked about understanding who are the people that are really or should really be important in our lives. He would often ask people, can you name for me the last five Nobel Prize winners? Oh, he'd say, can you tell me who are the last 10 actors and actresses who won Academy Awards? And then he looked at them and he'd say, difficult to do, isn't it? And then he would ask them, can you list for me three teachers who made a difference in your life? Can you tell me a few people who gave you some profound advice? Can you tell me five people who made you feel important and encouraged? And then he would say, the people that are important are not those who are rich or, or powerful. The people that are really important are those who care about you the most. See, Barnabas was a hero of the faith because as a Christ follower, he understood that he needed to care about others by giving generously to them. And we see him do this through his money and his time, through his encouragement and his support, through his teaching the word of God so that people might believe and come to be saved in Jesus Christ. We see that he was willing to speak the truth of God even in the midst of adversity. Well, the hero of the faith that I want to mention this morning from our congregation is Grace Marumoto. Now, Grace has served as clerk of session for many years now. She has faithfully given, given herself over in this way. She's led, for a time, the outreach committee. She has helped me teach the new members class and the officers training. During this time of the pandemic, pandemic, she's weekly gone with me to visit people in their homes, to bring the church to them, to bring the love of God to those who, who are more isolated. Grace is someone who is organized and, and who helps our events to go well. She is intelligent and, and committed to serving the Lord. And she blesses others by generously giving of herself in her time, in her money, and in her commitment, and in her energy. She is a wonderful encourager and supporter of people. And because of this, she is a hero of the faith. But the truth is, we can be heroes of the faith, like Barnabas, like Grace, when we give generously of our time, of our money, of our energy, when we give support and encouragement to others, when we give people second chances, when we speak the truth of God, 
to people so that they can be lifted up into the very presence of God and set forth on this journey that God has for us to live. When we can strengthen others because we are sharing the love of God with them. Today is Valentine's Day. And so we think about love. And there's no better way to love others than to give generously of yourself, whatever you have to give. And so I encourage you in this time to think about your possessions, your money, your time, your energy, your support, your encouragement. You're speaking the truth of God that you would make a commitment to faithfully do this as a Christ follower. And in doing so, you will be a hero of the faith. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that you bless us when we give of ourselves, but even more, you fill us with your spirit so that we desire to give of ourselves as Barnabas did. So change our hearts, empower us to be generous givers for your glory and in your name. And it is in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. Join me in a time of congregational prayer. Lord and Heavenly Father, we just give thanks for this day, Lord. We give thanks for your blessings. We ask that you would be with us as a congregation, Lord, as we maneuver through this time of uh, the pandemic. We pray that you'll provide us opportunities to reach out to our neighbors, and friends, share the good news of Jesus with them. We pray for this nation, Lord, and pray that you'll continue the healing of the political divides that divide us, Lord. We pray that you would give the public health officials wisdom as they uh, battle this pandemic, Lord. Give them wisdom. Pray you'll be with the scientists as well who are working on the vaccinations as well as the uh, new strains of uh, viruses that have come up. We just continue to ask your blessing upon those who are suffering. May you bring, bring them forward for us to minister to. We just ask these things in your son's name.
shall soon dissolve like snow the sun forbear to shine but god who called me here below will be forever mine will be forever mine you are forever mine on this day as we're thinking about love may we remember the the love of God the Father who created us, and the love of God the Son who redeemed us and saved us, and the love of God the Spirit who empowers us and gives us his truth so that we might share that with others. And so may this God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and every day. And all of God's people said, Amen. Go in God's love.